We are um, experiencing some pretty dramatic changes in Antarctic sea ice variability and the breaking news really right now, the Antarctic has just finished um, their austral summer and we have yet another um, well below sea ice extent, so sea ice coverage in the Antarctic summer. And this follows, you know, the last two years. These last three years all show record low summer Antarctic sea ice. And that's concerning. And when we say that, we're, we're comparing it to the satellite record. And so the satellite record is not really that long. Uh, we have continuous observations since 1978, 79. So we always have to keep that in mind. But based on that record, you know, for the last seven years, actually, we've been seeing numerous records broken in Antarctic sea ice extent. And so when I say sea ice extent, I mean the coverage of the Southern Ocean um, that is covered by seasonal sea ice. And that extends out in winter, and then most of it melts back in summer. And so we see this very strong seasonal cycle. And over the 40 plus years of satellite observations, what we have seen in general is a lot of seasonal variability, um, a lot of regional variability, and no really definitive change like we've seen in Arctic sea ice. Kind of just marched along up until about the mid 2000s, like 2005 to eight, and then we started seeing these dramatic record high sea ice extents. And then around 2016, 2017, we saw dramatic record low sea ice extents. So this is indicative of a systematic change where we have like 30 years of just, you know, low amount of variance compared to what we then experienced since 2008. And that last period has been characterized by extreme sea ice increases and then extreme sea ice decreases. The alarming factor in all this is that we don't quite understand <laughs> what created that dramatic increase and then the dramatic decrease. That period of time is characterized by a huge increase in the variance and also a very um, big increase in the persistence of anomalies. So you're getting these several years of record highs followed by several years of record lows. What we're also seeing is that there's been a changed response to atmospheric forcing. And so prior to this period, we could pretty much point to various atmospheric circulation anomalies, natural variability in the system like El Nino, Southern Oscillation, or the Southern Annular Mode. And that's coincided pretty well with the regional and seasonal variability we were seeing. But now the atmospheric drivers are not explaining these changes. We would see, as I mentioned before, a lot of regional variability, and now we're seeing the same change throughout the entire Antarctic sea ice field. So we call that, you know, the circumpolar anomalies are more now consistently showing either that strong increase up till 2016 and then the dramatic decreases. So we had this spatial coherence. All four of those factors point to the possibility that we, that the Antarctic sea ice system has undergone a regime shift or a state system change. The problem is, is we see that, but we don't have the data or the modeling capability to, to really understand you know, what has changed. We are um, at a strong disadvantage in the Southern Ocean because we don't have, have many ocean observations within the seasonal sea ice field. They're very difficult to acquire, but our autonomous technology is, is getting to the point where we are just starting to be able to collect those observations as well as using uh, seals, instrumented seals and penguins. So there's a bright future <laughs> in the fact that we will have more and more ocean data to test our hypotheses. And we need those data in order to understand the physics that drive this, the deeper ocean um, and its communication or connection to the upper ocean, and then that uh, connection to the sea ice and the atmosphere. That whole coupling is what we really need to understand better. Fortunately, technology is on our side. So, you know, that will bring us more observations, but we really do need ship-based process studies as well, because the coupling between the atmosphere, the sea ice cover and the ocean is, is really dynamic. And it means that, you know, the winds play a role, ocean currents play a role, and you really need to be 
there while sea ice is growing or while sea ice is melting and, uh, and measure those interactions. You need really detailed measurements to get the fluxes, for example. So in, until we have that body of data, we won't really know how this future um, projection may go with, we've been now in seven to eight years of record low sea ice, near record low sea ice, will that persist? The greater context to this is that we know very well that we have warming in the global ocean. And that's largely due to the extra heat we've put in the atmosphere through greenhouse gas increases. So the oceans have been doing us an enormous favor by absorbing 90% of that heat. So what's really even more incredible is that 90% that the oceans do for us, 70, nearly 70% 70 is occurring in the Southern Ocean. So the Southern Ocean plays an outsized role in mitigating that atmospheric warming effect induced by increasing greenhouse gases. And that role that the Southern Ocean plays is very tightly linked to that seasonal sea ice cycle. That's the extra alarm you know, that we feel right now because we see these very strong changes in the sea ice system. We know that there's a lot of ocean warmth knocking at the door of the Southern Ocean and that what we might finally be seeing you know, is a clear signal of anthropogenic warming of the oceans. So there's a real urgency here to better understand what's driving these changes, is how much of that is part of um, you know, the, the ocean warming signal that might be amplifying you know, these natural cycles. So there are mul multi-decadal cycles that occur, and we could very well be in one of those transitional cycles. But the amplitude of the response is indicating that we have amplified that cycle by climate change. And that's where we are now. The community is very actively pursuing these questions. And yeah, that's the latest update.